Okay, so, um, so then we have um, the Irish. So it's believed that the mushroom is a connection to um, like the underground. Um, and because of the like subterranean mushroom network, Mm -hmm. um, that can be thousands of years old. A lot of people believe that you can gain like ancient knowledge through the consumption of the mushrooms because you're connecting to this like very, very, very old network underground. That's kind of cool. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Super yeah. awesome. That's rad. Um, and then Romans believe that mushrooms were a gift from Venus, who's the goddess of love and beauty. Um, and similarly, um, well, we'll circle back to that. So then ancient Greeks believed that mushrooms are a symbol of the underworld and the afterlife. Um, and so they believe that eating mushrooms could help you commune with the dead um, and potentially um, some necromancy of bringing the dead back. Um, and so similarly to the ancient Romans, um, ancient Greeks believed that mushrooms were associated with um, uh, Demeter. I kind of skipped the rest of that. But they believed that it was associated with Demeter, who is the goddess of agriculture and fertility. Um, and so they believed that mushrooms were um, used in like fertility rites and love ceremonies. Um, and then also in Greek mythology, uh, mushrooms are associated with Pluto, who is the god of the underworld. And so again, similarly to the Romans, it's believed that you can connect to the underworld and the dead by consuming or working with mushrooms. Okay, so now we have the Eleusinian mysteries. Um, now this is kind of like very tangentially related to the Earth Star Chakra, but I went down this rabbit hole and it, I thought it was so interesting. Okay. Okay. So here we are. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. So here we are. Elusian. So the Eleusinian mysteries were a set of rites surrounded by a multi-day, nine-day festival, and it was tied to Demeter. And like her search for Persephone. Um, now, uh, this all like this whole ceremony comes from the um, the hymn to Demeter, and so I include some of the information here. But the mysteries were held; they were often just called the mysteries. Now, the mysteries were held once a year over nine day period in early fall um, in the city of Athens, and then especially in the city of Eleusis. Now, um, it's nine days because of this part of the, um, like, Demeter, the hymn to Demeter, uh, which was specifically, uh, therefore, for nine days. So, uh, Persephone has been taken to the underworld, and Demeter's, like, trying to find Persephone. And so, therefore, for nine days did the Lady Demeter wander all over the earth, holding torches ablaze in her hands. So, that's why it's nine days, is because she spent nine days alone looking for Persephone before she met Hecate. Um, so the activities began before the first official day, um, where the Hyra, um, which are like, is translated as holy things. Um, and so these are kind of like sacrifices. So the people, um, would stop. So they would start in, um, Athens usually, and then they would start walking to this the city of Eleusis and um or sorry from Eleusis to Athens and so they would start walking they would walk for like miles and miles and miles and then they would rest at a sacred fig tree now in the um the like Demeter story I couldn't find anything directly from that story about a fig tree but there is information about an olive tree so I don't know if there's just some like mistranslation happening or if I just overlooked the sacred fig tree but they would stop at a sacred fig tree because it said they believed in the story that Demeter also rested at a fig tree um, and so then she was cared for by Philotus um, and then as a reward for him helping her, she gave him the fig tree. Um, and so then they would continue after resting at the fig tree, they would kind of continue working their way. So on the first day of the mysteries, 
uh, the king magistrate would summon the people like in this big marketplace of Athens. Um, and then in the presence of the two people, one was deemed the hierophant and then the other was the Deidoshos, which is like the priest of the mysteries. Um, and they would call, they would make like this proclamation calling for the initiate, um, initiate, initiate. Um, and so then that, those were the people who were going to be doing the walking. So the first day they called them forward and everybody was allowed to participate unless um, you had committed homicide, uh, you were considered a barbarian after the Persian War, um, or if you didn't understand Greek. Um, so the people who were admitted would wash their hands in the water at the door, and that was kind of the whole first day. The second day, the participants walked to the sea near Athens and then cleansed themselves some more and then cleansed a small pig who would later be sacrificed. Uh, that was the whole day. It was like cleansing. Then on the third day, um, it wasn't certain because this is where a lot of secrecy kind of crept in and like you only knew what was happening if you were part of it. Um, but it's believed that um, they, that he made uh, sacrifices on behalf of Athens. Um, and then the fourth day was about um, commemorating like the late people. So essentially there was a God in the story. There was a God who had showed up late, um, but he was still allowed to be like, you know, in, he was a God. So they were like, okay, you're late. It's fine. And so, um, um, they allowed people to be, to show up a day late. So the fourth day was specifically for the people who showed up a day late to go through and like be cleansed and all of that. Uh -huh. Then on the fifth day, um, we have people, the people who are walking walked about 14 miles. Um, and then of course the rich people rode in like carriages. Um, and then, of course, yeah. So then um, the descendants or like the people who are walking would tie a woolen croak, um, which is a saffron colored ribbon around the right hand and the left leg. So the people who are walking, the initiate, initiates, um, had like something tied around their wrist and their feet, um, which gave them some time to rest. And then everybody continued walking after that. Um, while they're walking, after they have these ribbons tied around them, uh, these men who had would have bags over their head uh, were told to hurl like insults and mockery and abuse uh, the people, which included again like rich people. And it was believed that this was to humble these citizens before they got to like Demeter's workplace of worship. Um, then at this point, again, we get very, like, unclear about what's happening, but then we have the sixth day, um, was the, about fasting and purification. Now, people were fasting, and then the fast was broken by drinking this kaikion, which is also talked about in the letter to Demeter. So this is the story of that. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but basically um, this person, op so after Demeter has been like looking and there's, uh, this is after Hecate tries to help her, um, Metaneria offered her a cup with um, wine and Demeter refused. She said that it was divinely ordained that she was not to drink red wine. And so then um, Metanara offered her some um, barley and water with pennyroyal and potentially some other things to give and uh, Demeter drank that. Um, and so this was the kukirum mm -hmm. and um so that is what the people drink to break their fast on day six. Now, um, then there was more sacrifice happening. Um, and then on the seventh day was like a rest day. The eighth day was for like, so finally they could eat. They hadn't been eating. And finally they could eat. And then you're giving offerings to the dead. Um, and then just kind of general festivities. And then on the ninth day was the return to Athens. So that is the Eleusinian mysteries. Now, what's interesting about this 
it, I even said I went down this rabbit hole. So how is this tied to mushrooms? It's believed that ergot was part of the Kaikilan drink. So it's believed that in this lore, so it was um, barley, water, pennyroyal, and it was believed um, to also include the ergot, which is on the, um, probably on the what's it called on the barley. Yes, it's exactly. On, yeah. Yes, that it contained that on the barley yeah. and so it's also believed that in the mysteries uh -huh. that they were also drinking barley that had the ergot on it uh -huh. so right. ergot a uh, latin name uh clavicips clavicips uh, purpurea yes that so this <laughs> is a fungus <laughs> okay. so this is a fungus um, it's very toxic, but it's also a hallucinogenic fungus um, that grows on grain. And um, so it's, we, we can see it on um, berries and like barley and other things. Mm -hmm. And one of the main chemicals in it is LSA, which was the precursor to LSD. Um, and so some scholars believed that the the ecstatic rituals of the Greeks, just in general, these like powerful like sex rituals and stuff were fueled by the use of ergot. And it's also believed that ergot was responsible for yeah. a few cases of hysteria, including the Salem witch trials. Um, and it's believed that um, barley infested with this fungus and then uh, was infested with this fungus. People in Massachusetts ate it. And then this triggered the hallucinations and paranoia, which brought on the witch trials. And that's it for mushrooms. So interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, again, though, I do want to kind of revisit the idea of... You have to push this. The oh, yeah. Sorry. I want to revisit this idea of the... Um, the soul star chakra or the earth star chakra being associated with mushrooms i see mostly because yes definitely the network of like communication um underground but also because of the death and how cleansing can kind of be seen as like like the death of the the bad things right you are kind of like giving it to the earth to be regenerated and die and decompose and then definitely. be released and yes. into like better, more like positive things. I love that. So I would associate all mushrooms with the Earth Star Chakra. Me too. Um, okay. So I like yeah. all mushrooms. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to write that down on my thing. So I don't know awesome. if I did um, my herbs by, I've been updated my, like my herbs. Mm, your cards. Uh, that too, but um. But my, I have like a online list of herb, herbs by like category that I keep just a updated, like kind of category list. And so. Oh, like, like on my document? Yeah. Nice. Like I have an earth star category. Like I have one for each of the chakras. So this is. Very well, nice. Okay. So now we're going to go on to sacred tobacco. Now sacred tobacco is called mapacho. Um and Latin name is Nicotina rustica. No, it's now, good we had the accent on that one. I know. <laughs> you could have done the rose one that I did. You could have played that game. <laughs> Basically, um, not good. Yeah, not right, good. Huh? That's what good. your mom always told you. Get all the way back to that tobacco. Yeah. Accepted the cigarette. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's what led you down. Um, Devil's route. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so I do talk a little bit about the sacred tobacco and like the mapacho itself, uh -huh. but I, I'm focusing mostly on rape or hape or um and is that yeah. what you do you've done before That's that? Like Yes, the rafe is um, what I've done. So we'll kind of talk about like the administration and um, or like administering it and things like that. And how this one, I think, is has even a more obvious connection to the Earth Star Chakra. Okay, okay so 
um, Rafe, also known as Hoppe. Um, so Rafe is, it includes the mapacho, um, but there's also ash of other plants. So not, so it, it doesn't include like unburned parts of the plant. It's like the mapacho and the ash of other things. So it can sometimes include cinnamon ash, tonka bean ash, clover ash, banana peel ash, or mint ash. But a lot of the shamans and the like healing people within um, like the Aztec or not the Aztec, the Amazons, um, a lot of them keep it secret because, you know, it's kind of like it's a healing thing and they keep a lot of healing things secret to people who are not in that that community. Yeah, like safe, um, they're secret, which one? Yeah, yeah, it's like sacred. So um there's a lot of different blends you can find and things like that um but I um highly suggest doing research on like places to get it because you if you're just ordering it online like you're not going to know what's in there you know and so I highly suggest getting it from places that are very clear about what's in it um okay so the tobacco and the other ingredients are ground into a very fine powder um, because it's a snuff. So it's like blown into your nose. So it needs to be very fine. And so also if you're using it, you never want to put it directly into um, like the, the pipe. You never want to put it directly in there because you want to make sure that there's no chunks. And so you always put it in your hand first, kind of sift through it a little bit and then put it in. Um, and so then it's um, blown or snorted into each nostril through like this ceremonial pipe. And um, that pipe is sometimes uh, made from bone, um, but it's usually bamboo. Um, now it can be one person or two person. Um, and so um, I should have put pictures in here, but if it's one person, it looks kind of like a V. So you like blow it yourself and then it oh. goes up your nose like that. Oh. Um, or if somebody blows it into you, it can look um it's just like straight usually yeah huh. um so it's considered very cleansing hence earth star chakra um so after you take it it as it's known to cause vomiting diarrhea and sweating now i have taken it probably 10 ish times knock on wood I have not vomited or had diarrhea. However, I have sweated, but all three of those are considered purging. And so when you're purging, it's your body's way of getting rid of toxins. So very cleansing. Mm -hmm. um, it's not comfortable. Um, I, the first time that I did it, the, admin, the person who administered it said that it feels like getting water in your nose like that burning that's associated with that which is very accurate <laughs> it's not pleasant but it lasts a very short amount of time the pain is like it lasts I don't know for me it's like maybe 10 seconds um let's see and then so once you go through like the pain part of it it's very very um internal it is like very putting it's very much putting you into your own body which I also feel is kind of um earth star chakra because if we're looking I at soul star there by the way oh yeah I keep oh did I yeah just so you know mm. there we go um, <laughs> yeah I keep saying that too but um because um I think that there's an association between in earth and our body I think that there's a very deep connection where like yes. we yeah like we are like I don't know base life forms we are earth yeah. material we, we degrade are. into this like earth yeah we are I think like the like really not being a Christian the one um Christian tradition that makes the most sense is what we just had was Ash Wednesday because they mm. say from from dust you you from dust you were and to dust you will become or something yeah. like that yeah yeah um and there's some and I'm like because there not never was a truer statement said <laughs> from, yeah like you know like that's yeah. of course that's it yeah 
And so I think that like the idea, I think that going internally within ourselves is kind of a representation of going into the earth, you know? Yeah. So when you are using Rafa, you, it is an ultimate like in your body experience, which I think is going internal into the earth. And so I have this like really deep uh, correlation feeling with that. And also because of this ultimate cleansing and the removing of toxins. So it's the moving of toxins, which means like the death of the toxins, which is uh, the cleansing and also heavily associated with Earth Star Chakra. Um, now I do have just some like information, um, somewhat medicinal. So um, there is high nicotine content and um, beta carbolines. Um, and so these alkaloids are found in um, the cappy plant, which is one of the two like base ingredients in um, ayahuasca. Huh. And um, also they are MAOI inhibitors. And so it um, is associated with serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, and tyramine, um, which are like stimulating to the nervous system and some other things. Uh, so the tobacco plant, um, this one and tobacco in general, it has antidepressant effects, which is why when people smoke cigarettes, sometimes they feel better. Um, it's because it's like a natural anti um, antidepressant um, and it helps to kind of relax your body. Um, typically you want to blow into, so you have to do both, always both nostrils because it's all about balance. And if you only get into one nostril, you're going to be very unbalanced. And so always both, but you want to start with the left because the left side of the body represents, um, the like physical, like the body death. And then the right nostril represents rebirth. And so you want to go death and then rebirth. Um, okay. So this is kind of what I tied to that. So, um, I feel like when you, after you take it, you, so from personal experience, I can't say that it's this way with everybody, but when I take it, everything else shuts off. My mind shuts off. I don't, I forget temporarily that there's anybody around me. I don't hear anything. I don't feel anything outside of my body. My mind closes off and I am fully in my body. I feel my heartbeat. I feel my lungs. I feel the everything, the fluids moving through my body. It's a very physical, like in body experience, which I feel again, very earth star shock. Very earth star. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So much. Yeah. So it's really beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. Um, I, um, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, it also really, really fills me with like, just like, a heavy blanket of like gratitude which I also experience when I am like outside in earth in like a beautiful natural setting I feel a lot of gratitude and so there's that association there as well um the effects are very short it's last like five to ten minutes um but it's very beautiful and then these are my sources <laughs> I love it awesome. uh, yeah that's it cool I love it up Sharon let's get oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go very nice oh, that's great I know here I'm gonna stop the I'm gonna stop the recording but that was a cool first recording we can talk about some things yeah. more in a second let me stop this